Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show, and I'm very happy to have Mike Semenoff here. He is with Mission Volant. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. It's great to have great. you. I, I was uh, introduced to Mission Volant uh, at the Healing Fields uh, on September 11th this year and uh, watched you skydive into the uh, area there and was impressed. Oh, yeah. With not only your skydiving ability, with the, uh, you had the you're carrying the American flag, mm -hmm. which I, I should mention did not touch the ground, which was awesome. Yep. Too many times I see a dragon on a, behind a parachutist, but not you. And uh, that was impressive. But also when I found out what you guys were really all about, I was blown away. So talk to me a little bit about Mission Volant. Tell folks what it's all about. Yeah, so uh, Mission Volant is uh, it's a nonprofit organization. They, they, it's like veteran adventure therapy. So we'll take uh, take vets out skydiving, paragliding, anything to just get them out and get active and integrated into the community and, and get them networked with other vets that are like-minded and might be going through this, through some of the same same issues and just helping people yeah. out. And you guys had a, a pretty special uh, guest there, uh, a double amputee. Yeah, uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, yeah. Yeah, he was a Marine and he went through our skydiving program, so we got him tandem, got him in the wind tunnel and uh, getting him jumping. He's still come, come, you know, part of that program. Um, but yeah, we tandem amazing. him in. Yeah, it was really uh, something. It was, it was interesting being in the plane and having uh, Robbie with his legs here and then Jonathan in the middle and I'm like behind them helping put his legs out and get him in, yeah. you know, get him situated. And, over top of the city, you know, it was, it was cool. It was, it was a good impressive. experience. I, everything about that was amazing. What was I thought was kind of hard, like I, I think it was uh, eye-opening is the right word, but also inspiring. There was a, a lot of things, uh, a lot of emotions I was having when I saw it after he landed. He was the first one to unbuckle and on the ground, and I could not believe he was able to just carry himself right to his wheelchair, right up on it, and it, I think there was, I don't know, there was an awe in the audience oh, yeah. to watch him and, and to see that how much he has persevered through yeah. things, how resilient that man is. That was, oh yeah, I was hard to, it's hard to describe, really. Yeah, it is cool, like, seeing him in his chair, up just smiling yeah for the picture just standing tall and yeah he stands tall yeah. that's exact that's yep. that's it without legs that man stands tall yep that's absolutely. crazy it is it was awesome it was inspiring that is the kind of thing that you see on an uh, on an all-the-time basis though you're with guys that inspire you all the time yeah you know it's interesting because sometimes I'll, I'll put on an event I was like hey I'm gonna take 10 guys out paragliding for free and I'll put it out there and, and nobody you know, I don't get a lot of response, but who I do get response from is the family. Like yeah. mom and dad, hey, my boy would really, he'd really appreciate this. I was like, bring him out. Or the spouse, hey, my husband's really, he's just kind of crawled inside, you know, bring him out. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so you're helping some more of those guys stand yeah, back up. Yeah, yep, and that's the thing. It's like, they're, a lot of guys don't want a handout. You know, yeah. they don't want to be that guy that's looking for something, but it's, you know, it's not that. It's like. Literally, it's almost therapy for me and other guys who served with Mission Volant. It's like, hey, we get to be there for our boys who we weren't necessarily there for, you know, during the wartime. Exactly. So here we are, now we're like helping each other out and giving them legs again. Well, you know, you're a vet as well, uh, 82nd Airborne. Yep. Talk to me about your experiences and uh, jumping. How many jumps have you made, first of all? Um, I should ask you that. You know, 25 in the military. Yeah. And then almost 2,000 civilian. Wow. So I've been jumping since 96. Holy <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> yeah, my dad uh, had me grow. You know, he started skydiving when I was just a little kid. And I'd be packing his parachute 11, 12 years old, out at the airport packing the parachute and being around it. And he had you pack his shoe. Yep. That's some trust. Yep. And then uh, turned 18 and went out and just started, started jumping and getting integrated. And then I joined the military and continued jumping there. And now that I'm out, I just jump, do tandems, jump into events, did the Dodger Stadium, jumped into uh, That's not a big Daytona target. Speedway. People think that that's a big target. That's not a big target. Well, it's, it? it's just, it's big, but it's weird because it's got the high walls. You gotta, yeah. And then the air coming Throw over in. that gets really weird when you get inside, but overall it's, it's <laughs> the big ones like that are fun. You just gets the heart rate up a little bit. I bet. Crowds are fun, so. Wow. <laughs> So you inspire some of those soldiers too. I bet they, they, yeah. I know they feel that from you. Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Th I'd like to think so. It's just because uh, I served until 2001 active duty, and then I got out in May, 
and September 11th happened, and all yeah. my boys went. You know, I knew it, and, and I was in a tight-knit little recon team where we were really tight. We didn't have to talk. We knew exactly what everybody's thinking. Right. And I knew all of them were going. And there's really nothing. I was enrolled in school, completely separated. Yeah. There's no chance of me like re-enlisting and getting back with that crew, no. which is where I'd want to be. So I stayed in school and got my degree. And now, now that all these people are coming back, it's like I got to be there for them. Because I feel the same way. Because the same thing happened to me. I got out just before uh, I separated uh, for the same reason to go back to school. And then all of a sudden, this happens, mm -hmm. and you feel like you're not part of it. Yeah, and that's tough because you know what the door to door was like. Oh yeah, yeah. That that stuff that you you know the first Gulf War was a little different um, than what we saw our friends going to, and yeah, you wanted to go. I'm sure you like me. You wanted to go back. Oh yeah, yeah. And and the reason I wanted to go back was because I wanted to be there for my boys. Yeah, the guys that I served with, and we were just like we we're like family, and that's the guys I wanted to be there with. But that's not, a, yeah. not so much going there to go to war, but it was no. like, I wanted to go there to be with my boys. And have their back. And have their back, and they'd have my back, and it's just a, it's just a different, it's almost like like family, literally. Well, and you guys still are friends, and you're still family. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is important. Yeah, a couple of them. A couple I haven't, haven't heard back yet. I, In a little bit? Yeah. Well, some people go different directions. And that's right. Some people don't come back, you know, but. Indeed. Talk to me about, you know, your day-to-day -day with Mission Vuant, uh, the opportunities that you have with some of these soldiers. Can you tell me a story that inspired you? Somebody you've you've helped bring back to, because I think for a lot of people they don't understand, uh, maybe, maybe we can articulate this in some way, the way in which this reintegrates people. Uh, getting back, you know, getting out in an adventure with other guys. Yeah. Um, you know, the one that really sticks out is uh, Rusty Brooks. Now this guy, he was an amputee, Marine, and I wish I could pull up his video because uh, just him telling his story. I mean, on the edge of committing suicide a couple times, yeah. And coming out, and he he ended up he jumped with us, and I don't know if it's it a little spark or it's just something. Uh, now the guy's out getting ready to start his own nonprofit, and he's like on like a speaking thing where he goes wow. around and speaks to different church groups and other stuff. So it's like that's one of those stories. Like, wow, we actually made a difference. You know, it wasn't just going out there and giving somebody an adventure. It was like, wow, we actually probably change somebody's life and by changing his many others many others yeah that's impressive that's uh, that's what this is all about I mean, we talk uh, this has been an important topic I think over the last couple of years we uh, you know you mentioned suicide we're losing a lot of servicemen to it uh, and women uh, this has become a critical I think point uh, now to to be there and to, to try to provide help Mm -hmm. um, and we remind you that if you do get yourself, uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're with a serviceman or, or a woman or anybody for that matter who feels that they're going to commit suicide, stay with them. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Take them and help them get, uh, take them to, to help. Don't leave them yeah, for any amount of time. I think it's the isolation that really right. gets people. They feel like they're alone and they're too broken to be fixed or whatever. And it's, it's not that. It's like you got to there's so many other people in that same boat and if you can just get out there and network and just be reintegrated with your family you know what I mean even though it might not be the guys you served with but you spilt the same blood you know what I mean you right. just, you, you chewed on the same dirt yeah. and really been through a lot of the same things so it's like get out there they're everywhere you know there's support there so. is yeah you know you said it uh, a minute ago it's one thing to be out there with your boys uh, it's another to have uh, you know, and we, this is true, the brotherhood of it all, the sisterhood mm -hmm. of it all is, is in the fact that we've all served. That's, uh, and a, you know, that's a shared experience to begin with, yeah. right? Basic training is a shared experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of it is a shared experience, yeah. but uh, being there for them, that's what uh, Mission of Lawn is all about. How do people, uh, if they've got a service member that does need them to step forward for them, or if you are a service member, how do you find Mission of Lawn? Just look them up online, Mission Volant. Um, you can get on just on Instagram. They have a decent Instagram following as well. That's just right. Get on Lots of great message. photos there. Yeah. Um, Robbie Hill, he's like the, the founder of Mission Volant. He's really good at getting back to people really quick. Um, or you can hit me up at Inspiration RX on Instagram as well. So. All right. I haven't taken a jump yet. Can you believe that? Well, let's do it. So yeah. I guess we're going to have summer. to do this. Okay. Absolutely. I'm planning on this summer. We'll film that. <laughs> I was planning on going to se age 71st, like uh, the former President Bush, but 
let's just, let's get, just it do it. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Thanks so much for being here. It's great stuff with Mission Volant. They're helping our vets, and you know, help. We hope as we come up on Veterans Day that you'll take a moment to help out too by just simply thanking them for their service. And if you see someone in crisis, please step up and help them. They do need that reminder that we're all right there with their six. We got a lot more coming up here on the Mountain Morning Show right after these messages.